So this summer, of course, not what I wanted, not the times I wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your championship finalists. I learned a lot about scheduling, how to manage my time, what I need to do in training to get better. Going with Dressel is Michael Andrew. Uh, but this is one of the most mentally straining summers I've ever had. The two guys right there in the middle look really good right now. It's Dressel and Andrew, and it may be Andrew, it is. Michael Andrew wins it again. He beats Dressel by 18 one hundredths. That's just kind of how the sport goes. You have a bad meet, you learn from it. You have a good meet, you learn from it. You could never test us. Oh yeah, cause we're uh, the best. We go. So 2018 Nationals was amazing. Going into the meet, the goal was to make the Pan Pack team and the World Champ team, as well as win as many titles as I can. Michael Andrew moving up. Second final of the night for Andrew. He's still got a shot at it. And I went on to win four national titles. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Andrew. Obviously it doesn't always work out like that, but it was one of my breakout meets. And I'm super stoked that it worked out like that. Caleb's been nine seasons in a row with absolutely no step backwards. Unfortunately, all sport or anything in life isn't just a constant upward eye. After 2017, he won seven golds, right? And it's hard to repeat those types of results. I actually don't think he had like a bad meet. It was just, it wasn't what other people expected of him. It was a stressful summer. Right after NCAAs, diving into finding an agent, looking for sponsors, making a business. It was just a lot of stuff that I had never done before, so it was like all this was thrown at me at once, and there's really no other way to do it. Dressel and Andrew battling for the win. The nice thing about some of those things is it makes you appreciate and realize how hard it is to win at the highest level. Michael Andrew is a stud. What he's been able to do here in Irvine is just unbelievable. I want to say forget about it, but that's not what I do. I like to hold on to it, use it, don't forget about it. Remember how upset it made me and not be happy about it. So I look good. My beard's not too ridiculous. Look okay. Oh no, not the announcer. No. Ah, come on, announcer. Michael Andrew had the summer of his life, winning multiple national titles and upsetting some of the greatest swimmers on the planet, most notably beating Caleb Dressel in the 50 freestyle. There's nothing more dangerous than one of the fastest swimmers in the world, Caleb Dressel, swimming with nothing to lose. Am I phrasing that right? Nothing to lose. Oh. I expect Caleb to be more motivated and more determined to prove everybody wrong than ever. I just wanted to get back in the water and train. Of course, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do when I have a bad meet and I wanna bounce back is go do something about it. He's one of those guys that in addition to wanting to win, he doesn't like losing. It's a tremendous combination when you have both of those and uh, a fierce competitor, not just for himself, but also the team. He's constantly learning, and I think that's one great thing about Caleb. He's always looking for ways to get better, to do better for his team. That's one thing that I've always like looked up to him for. Hold your technique, keep it steady. The good thing about Caleb, when he stepped out on the block, you always got 100%. And we're very fortunate to uh, have been part of his success here. One of the tips he gave me when he was on the team, he's in the post-grad group now, was, um, well, works for me, it might not work for you. And so make your strength stronger and like your like, kind of like weaknesses will follow. Practice is always tough because uh, the really good athletes tend to find a way to push themselves. So it gets pretty competitive in practice and basically that's what you want. Good walls, good walls, good walls. I think actually he's opened doors to swimmers across the world and what we can do as humans. I mean, he broke 18, 17.6. So breaking barriers allows the rest of us to see what we can get better on ourselves. It's about being better every day and what can you do? How many goals, how many walls are you gonna work? Are you gonna stay consistent to your kicks, your stroke count? And it's tough, it's definitely a mind game because the hardest person to deal with in practice is yourself. 
You know, I tell kids all the time, you know, if you have a day off, you're gonna get beat. You have to bring your A game every time. Bang, bang, keep your legs moving off the walls, guys. Three more for the Gators. Let's go. So, give me a characteristic of a Gator that every swimmer needs. Think how uh, aggressive they are. Buoyancy would help me a lot. I don't float. A gator needs to be fierce, a gator needs to be aggressive, and a gator needs to be great in the water. Toughness and resilience. Gators are dinosaurs that have made it. I think I've heard they go like 15 miles per hour, so be careful because if they start chasing you, then you gotta run zigzag. But the zigzag thing's a lie. Just run. Don't, yeah, just run. Get out of there. You have to do your job in the pool. That's the main focus, but to get stronger, you get faster, you gotta show up and perform in the weight room. Increasing your vert is definitely gonna help your start, get distance off your start, and with that explosiveness, that's gonna shift into the speed in the water. We're doing the flood sprints and the box jumps, which a lot of that is geared towards the twitchiness, off the wall training, and then of course, off the blocks. I'm gonna show you how to grind, show you how to shine, show you how to get one of the reasons why the starts is so phenomenal is because it's very athletic and obviously the strength and conditioning program under Matt Delancey, who's one of the best swimming strength coaches in the world. For a high school athlete, I'd pick a box jump and make it sure that the athlete is landing with their hips above their knees. Feet straight ahead, knees lined up between second and third toe, flat footed landings, and I wouldn't do any more than 12 to 20 jumps starting out. I think the biggest mistake is they just overload them in the weight room and those kids end up a little broken. We never max in the weight room. The only thing I've done is a set of two. We've never done a set of one of anything. Really the fine tuning of those starts though happen in the pool. I'm the expert in doing all the park practice to help that coach have better tools for that athlete to put it all together out there. Caleb Dressel, what most comes to me, he's a coach's dream. He's committed to the sport. He will communicate with you, and he's coachable. Always looking for ways to get better. I feel like a lot of people have that one bad race, or you look at boxers who have one bad fight, they get knocked out, and then they can't come back from it. You gotta be able to come back, or you're, you're not gonna learn anything in the sport. In the fall, he had an injury, which didn't allow him to turn, and during that six-week period, we did everything turning without a wall to push off of. It was tremendous in that it helped him develop the ability to generate power from zero. And I think we saw that at the Short Course World Championships. He's a whole new person, completely different from where he was at prior to nationals. But we hardly ever talk about swimming, to be honest. Last night is a perfect example. You know, the last conversation I have with him is about his new chicken that he's getting. Bill is my hen. She's a little too tame to be a chicken, to be honest. She usually comes inside for potato rolls. That's like her go-to snack. For her being a chicken, I love that thing way too much. Please don't say something. Mm. Ah, here we go. Did I say enough about Michael? Michael had a great summer. Mm, how do I phrase this? Michael Andrew proved that he's more than just an age group phenom and shotgunning himself onto the world stage. He's now one of the fastest swimmers on the planet in all four strokes. Knoxville was my first Pro Series to race in, and uh, collecting two wins was great. Michael Andrew in front, and he will touch the wall first in 22-11. So it was really one of those meets that set me up for a great season. It is Andrew in five with a slight lead. And now we're in the thick of training, getting ready for World Championships later this July. 24-73, the winning time for Michael Andrew. It's always nice to be surprised by your time. If you set your goals correctly and you look up and see that you actually hit them or you're faster than them, it should be very surprising to you and it shouldn't happen often. I'm always creating new goals. So obviously with Summer Nationals last year going so well, the goals have changed going into Korea for sure. I've never been vocal about those. There's some times that me and Troy have talked about, of course, and it's not just throwing a number out, but being able to back it up with how are we gonna get there. 
I'm gonna keep the specifics to myself, but um, I'll be going in swimming multiple events, multiple strokes, and my goal is to win as many gold medals for the US of A. When we get to 2020, we're not spending six months searching, we're spending six months refining. And I think sometimes everyone worries too much about what happens the 18 months before, and what happens 18 months for is really just preparation and get, making sure those last six months are correct. I'm getting ready for Worlds, which is eight months away. I'm super excited because we just get to train. It's the most fun part of the sport, I think, because you don't have to worry about anything except getting better. That's the plan, and we're sticking to it. The hardest part about being on top is staying on top. World record holder, Kathleen Baker. There's always people chasing you, and it's definitely easier to be the underdog.